I'm Sithrith. I'm Draculetta. I'm Mathelros. And you're listening to Radio Free Tyria, the Guild Wars 2 podcast for the casual crowd. So this week we do have a lot of news to talk about, uh, which is quite the opposite of the past two weeks. We have so much to talk about. I don't even... I, it's hard to know where to start, because ArenaNet has been at TwitchCon, which is apparently a thing. TwitchCon is a thing. And so ArenaNet has a whole big Guild Wars 2 booth, and so they've been doing tons and tons of streaming. Yesterday and today, they're actually streaming right now while we're doing this podcast, they're talking about personal story stuff right now, which is kind of, I'm okay with missing, because, you know, spoilers or whatever. They've been talking a lot about Heart of Thorns, um, and, of course, you know, we have less than a month now until Heart of Thorns comes out, so they've released the Heart of Thorns official launch trailer, which I guess is as good a place as any to start on this big, giant pile of news that they've been going through. So, the official trailer was actually a lot shorter than I thought it would be, um, but it was pretty good, although it's kind of I don't know. For an official launch trailer, it was a lot more story, kind of cinematic-y than I expected it to be, because I feel like they've been showing these, like, kind of trailery teaser clips where they, like, list the different features, like, oh, raids and Stronghold and World v. World New Borderlands and all this stuff. And so I figured the launch trailer would, like, show some of these features like that. Because, you know, when you're yeah. having a launch trailer, you want to show off these features so that people know what to expect. Yeah, but... it was pretty much just Ritlock and Mordremoth. Yeah, it was basically like Ritlock doing cool Ritlock revenant things. And then Mordremoth being like, I'm made out of vines or whatever. Or not. Mm -hmm. It's hard to tell. Um, because initially people thought there's this big monster at the end that people thought, oh, like that's, that's Mordremoth. We get to see Mordremoth. Especially since he refers to himself as me. Right. Well, that's the thing. It's kind of hard to tell. If it's coming directly from that thing, because I guess, like, I mean, Silvari can apparently just hear Mordremoth talking just whenever in Verdant. Well, yeah, but if you look closely, the mouth was kind of moving on it. Yeah, but so... apparently they have said in streams today that that creature at the end of the official launch trailer is not actually Mordremoth. I guess he was just speaking through it. I guess it's kind of like how, you know, Krakatork has the Shatterer and... Jormag has uh, the Claw of Jormag, and Zaitan has Tequaddle. Like, it's a big champion kind of thing, I guess. Technically, Vinewrath is also a big champion like that of Mordremoth, but it doesn't talk because it's a flower. So, I guess he needed to make something with a mouth so he could talk to Ritlock, because reasons. But otherwise, it's 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 a pretty cool trailer. Like, it, you know, Mordremoth sounds pretty creepy, which is, like, you know, what you want in a villain. I guess. Yeah. So besides that, the other really big news thing that they did this week, or this weekend specifically, was they revealed the druid. And Drax, since you main a ranger, and you actually read the post they made about it in detail, I will let you talk about the druid. You're well, ranger. before we talk about the druid, there is a few things coming uh, in Heart of Thorns that is going to be available to every ranger, mm -hmm. and that is a tiger. Yay. Yes. You can get a tiger as a pet. That is so awesome, and I want one. <laughs> have awesome. they had any tigers in the world? Not yet. Like, I mean, no there's like the jaguars and stuff like that, hmm. panthers. I guess there's going to be tigers in Heart of Thorns, and Makes sense there was, that's where we get them There from. was a lot of them in the original Guild Wars. Hmm. Okay. In the, the more jungle areas, I presume. Yes. That makes sense. So, yeah. yeah. This is the first time that we're actually going to get them in Guild Wars 2. And also coming for every ranger is Smoke Scale. And that is basically going to be a dinosaur that you can tame. Yay, what dinosaurs. It's, what, it, what it's going to do is it's going to create a smoke field. And while it is in that smoke field, it will evade attacks consistently. And it will be immune to all conditions. Hmm. So, which basically that's going to be a very, very, very tanky little pet you can have. Yeah, that sounds pretty nice. Hmm. And speaking of dinosaurs, there's going to be another one called the Bristleback. 
And that is going to be a condition applying dinosaur. It's constantly going to shoot spines at its targets, frequently applying bleeds to the target that it hits. Nice. So we're getting tigers and dinosaurs. But not to be outdone, we're actually going to get some dragons. Kind of. Kind of. Baby little tiny fake dragons. Baby. Yes. The electric and fire. And now I've heard this word pronounced three different ways. I probably say it different than what everybody else says it. Well, we'll find out. I say Wervian is how I pronounce it. I say Wyvern. No, I'm thinking Wyvern. I've heard it that way too. But anyway, it's basically a baby dragon. The yeah, electric version is going to be a- it has an activated ability that will perform a head charge, which will stun and knock enemies caught in the path of the charge. And at the end of the charge, it's also going to leave a lightning field behind it from where it charged. Hmm. So that's so like that- the, um, what do they call them? Elementalists? No, uh, Mordremoth <laughs> has them. Oh, uh, the Thrashers, kind of? Mm, I was thinking more of the other ones, well, the charging ones. Terrorgriffs. Yeah, terrorgriffs. They do that move where they sort of oh, charge gosh. and could they leave imagine, behind them. Could you imagine if hurts. rangers had terrorgriff pets? That'd be nuts. <laughs> that would be crazy. And then the final one is going to be the fire version. It has an a- activated ability where it's going to fly up into the air and it will spew down fire from above, causing a giant pulsating fire field. That's always fun. It- and the nice thing about the fire version is once it's up in the air, it is going to be immune from all damage and attacks. So rangers are getting some new pets, which is always good. But then the druid was announced. Which you're not excited about, apparently. Not really. Um, well, tell I'm, us why. Well, I've never been a big uh, healer player. Mm-hmm. Uh, even in the original Guild Wars, I mean, I do have a, um, I did play a monk, but my monk was basically like a tank monk, cause I had okay. a build that I was like using the monk more of a tank, and the only, only heals I used was like self healing, basically. I never really bothered to heal anybody else. So that's why I'm not too excited about this druid. But what's interesting though, is this is kind of Bringing the Holy Trinity to Guild Wars 2, which they said they would sort never do. I feel like it's kind, more... Kind of, sort of, it is. It's like a soft Trinity, I feel like. It's not healing, DPS, tanking. It's more like support and damage and not tanking, but just, I guess, control, right, yeah. kind of. What ArenaNet said of it uh, in the reveal video is it's a heavy healing... To Guild Wars 2, unlike anything that we have ever seen before. It's going to feature strong support, very powerful in the upcoming raids and uh, World vs. World. And it can sustain a Zerg train of 20 to 30 players in World vs. World. When I heard that, I I was like, I will believe it when I see it. Exactly. Yep, that's exactly how I was. I mean, even in traditional MMOs with traditional Holy Trinities, usually, like, one person can't heal that many people. No. So, we'll see how that goes. The Druid, of course, is using a staff, and you're going to get some new skills for that. The first one is the Solar Beam. Any ally between you and the target that are caught inside the beam will be healed by you. It's going to be three pulses, 12 thousand range or twelve hundred range, sorry. And the healing numbers you see on the tooltips are without stats, so they will be better in game. And that was for the in the video they were showing you some some tooltips. And those numbers uh I guess were just numbers they put in. Right. So don't look at uh any numbers you see on that video and think, well that's not that great. That's very T B D it will be yes, exactly. You're also gonna get the Astral Wisp and that is going to cast a Wisp at your target. It will deal damage to the target initially, but any ally that the Wisp passes through is going to be healed. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, it's... like The Druid is very healy. It's, it, it's, it's, it's a, just strange. It's I don't such wanna... a strange direction to take it is. The, it is. the Ranger of all things, I feel yeah. like. I, I figured like if somebody was going to get a dedicated healing elite specialization, it would have been an elementalist because, I mean, you know, water 
obviously already exactly kind like of that. goes with right. that. Yeah. But Ranger, I feel like maybe so many even people. A guardian. Right. Maybe a guardian. Um, I guess Revenant has Ventari, and I guess Glint kind of goes along with it, but it's more just general control, support, buffness. But yeah, like of all the things to get a healing trait line, at least specialization thing, I would like never a complete have dedicated one. Right, like, exactly. If, if they got something that was like guardian sort of off healing or elementals have like a certain stance to heal in, then okay. But yeah, this is like heavy, heavy healing. Right. This is full on healing. Like all of these skills are dedicated to healing. Like, yeah, like your first, yeah, like you were saying, solar beam, it's a healing skill, but it's, you know, one of their main skills. It's not a utility skill. So it's kind of weird. Speaking of utility skills, there are some new ones of those. The Glyph of Rejuvenation. You can heal yourself a lot. Mm -hmm. It also will heal allies within 300 uh, radius for less than what you get. So basically that's your self-heal. Right. But then again, it will heal others. Mm -hmm. The Glyph of Alignment is going to apply conditions, cripple, and weakness within the target area. And that will give you a chance to escape. Okay. The Glyph of Tides is going to be an AoE knockback of a 360 radius. It also gives you and allies a chance to escape or interrupt, which I can see that being used in PvP and World vs. World a lot more than mm. likely. And the Glyph of Empowerment, a damaging support utility that will boost nearby allies, and it will also damage, uh, boost damage by 10% for the next 6 seconds. Right. So, and then also the druid is going to have a celestial transform. And that is what the image you are currently seeing on the video stream version of the podcast. Um, yeah. Some, what I, I was really disappointed because I missed this stream because it happened before I woke up. But, um, yeah, everybody was like, oh, druids get to transform into the celestial avatar oh it just looks like death shroud but for rangers oh blah, blah blah but like nobody actually took a picture of it and like they didn't there wasn't a picture of it anywhere online until a couple hours later and i was so disappointed because guild wars 2 is supposed to be all about aesthetics and nobody bothered to take a picture of it the visual effect seems to be like that sort of starry thing they have in um lion's arch like in the bank right well the black lion bank People have been talking a lot about the Guild Wars 1 weapon set called the Celestial Weapons, which makes sense because this is supposed to be called the Celestial Avatar, and the Celestial Weapons in Guild Wars 1 look like this space field kind of thing that's going on. Mm. Yeah, so, makes sense. But yeah, I don't think it looks like Death Shroud at all because it's blue and it looks like outer space and not the like only, death. Right. The only thing that's kind of like Death Shroud is you have to like build it up, and you basically do that by uh, attacking, healing... Uh, and the noticeable thing with it is if you heal, it actually is more effective at building up your astral force, which is what you need to go into your celestial form. Right. So once again, the druid is very, very heavy leaning towards healing. You can get it via attacking, but it's going to take you a much longer time versus once you use your healing skills. Mm-hmm. And once you transform, you will gain a new set of skills. The Cosmic Ray has no cooldown target ground application of straight up healing. That sounds You can pump crazy. out a lot of healing with that. Yeah, it's that's like a basically an uber oh shit heal basically. As long as you're you know have your astral force built up, you can pop into your form and basically just pop that off instantly. That's crazy. It's I guess that's how it's going to sustain 20 to 30 people in a raid or whatever. The seed of life, you're going to plant a seed on the ground, and when that seed burst open, it's going to heal all of your allies, and it will cleanse any conditions. Jeez. The lunar impact drops a lunar missile on you, dazing any enemies, and once again, healing all your allies in the process. And that daze, they did state, is a pretty strong daze. The Tidal Surge is going to be a channeled ability that is huge. That, I'm sorry, that is a huge consistently pulsating heal that heals for over 1k per tick. Jeez, calm it down, also, druids. Yeah, exactly. It also creates a water field 
and uh, it's going to be very visible for your allies. So, although, like you said, they these are just kind of numbers that they have right now, and I um, yeah, assuming I'm assuming it's going to get hoping changed. Hoping some of these are going to get changed because, as this stands now, just on paper, uh, Druid's OP. You're very OP. <laughs> Yeah, like the thing they mentioned about these being able to heal, like, was it 20 to 30 people? Mm-hmm. That means that in order for them to be able to do that, they're going to be overpowered when, they, when they're healing anything less than that. Right. This is a problem, like we've seen in other MMOs, where they need to balance for healers being able to heal the higher-up stuff. So when you're in the lower stuff, it's completely face roll. Yeah, I'm... Well, luckily, uh, next weekend is going to be another beta event weekend. It's also going to be the last beta weekend before, you know, before the game act- or the expansion actually launches. But I'm hoping that, yeah, we get some good testing in and people give some good feedback and they tweak things so it's not... I mean, I, like, I'd be totally happy to see a totally viable healer in Guild Wars 2 because... Oh, yeah, I'd definitely be in for that. But um, I also don't want it to be so powerful that it makes everything just face rolly, like you said. Um, so I guess and- we'll see... I might actually create one of these just to see. I'm usually not a big healer person, but mm-hmm. reading through this, it it sounds kind of fun. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm I've kind of had my ranger on the back burner for quite a few months now, but this actually made me kind of excited about it, and I actually used the total makeover kit on my ranger to make it blue to match the druid thing. Well, it is interesting in that this one, like more than the others, like by quite a lot, I think really changes the main core of the class. I like, definitely look agree. at, say, Necros, mm-hmm. or like Chronomancers. Yeah, some of their abilities are different, like the Necros more melee and slower. Generally, they're still sort of, you know, Necro-y. Right. And Mesmers still use a bunch of clones, and they do a bunch of damage. And they're, you know, really annoying. This is like complete change around. Instead of being very focused on doing damage and staying from the back and just... Pew pewing. Mm-hmm. These like you're just going full support heal now. It's like really hundred percent flip, right? Which is really interesting compared to the other ones. Yeah, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of, but you are totally right. Like this is the one elite specialization that is to- that really takes the class to a completely different place than the vanilla classes. The closest other one I could think of is maybe Dragon Hunter for Guardian, and even that's still supportive. Right, that's still a very supporty kind of... Uh, I mean, yeah, you get the longbow, which is very different from everything else the Guardian has, but yeah, you're still doing a lot of support. It's just where you're standing, because normally Guardians would be in the front line supporting, it's just you're in the back instead. Right, whereas Ranger, like, the closest it gets to uh, healing and this kind of support is, like, the traps that it can use for some of its utilities and stuff, but it's not anywhere... It's not anything like this. Yeah. So this will be really interesting to see. We'll also get to see the Scrapper during beta weekend event number three, which is good because, yeah, those two are the only two we haven't seen thus far. Um, I definitely think I'll try one during the beta weekend event, and hopefully if I can get Guild Wars 2 working on my open broadcast software, I will stream some of that. Um, But yeah. So that's just a couple of the things that they've talked about for TwitchCon. They've also done a whole bunch of different panels. A lot of the panels have kind of covered stuff we already know. Um, for example, they talked a bit about adventures, which, if you remember, is kind of like Fancy Pants events. It's like events plus, I guess, for Heart of Thorns. Uh, they're basically these kind of, I don't know how to phrase it. They're, they're just like events that have a specific chain that you go through and you can... Um, do them solo, and, you know, there's that whole leaderboard thing. So they kind of went through and they talked about some specific events that are going to be coming, so they talked about um, one where kind of, like, it's a puzzle-jumping uh, platformer, almost, kind of? I mean, it's not it's it's not as jumping puzzly as a lot of the jumping puzzles we have right now in-game, but, yeah, you basically it's like you don't want to touch the lava on the ground because it's lava, I shouldn't have to explain why you don't want to touch it, because it's lava. And then the other one that they talked about is called Fallen Masks, and basically you're using gliders and the bouncing mushrooms uh, to, like, soothe these masks in the area, and it's kind of weird. But yeah, so they basically just kind of gave more examples of what adventures are. 
Um, another one that they talked about briefly was where you drive a char motorcycle around, which sounds pretty cool because char motorcycle. Um, and then, you know, there's other ones that are jumping puzzle oriented, which, you know, we're up for that. I love jumping puzzles. They also talked a bit about PvP leagues, and, uh, I'm, I'm interested in that because I love PvP. Um, they kind of just went over again, like, you know, there's gonna be seasons. Each season will last for eight weeks. Um, so that's four seasons per year with two weeks in between. And apparently they're gonna be doing balance patches on classes between each season. So that'll kind of, I guess, it, you know, they're just going to try and make sure things are balanced between each season so that, it, you know, every season isn't just like, oh, Elementalists dominate this season, Elementalists dominate the next season, etc. Um, they also mentioned again, uh, through PvP you'll be able to get a PvP unique legendary backpack, which is cool. Um, so yeah, if you're into PvP, that's all cool stuff. So basically, yeah, basically they're trying to make it so that PvP kind of resets every eight weeks or so, so that new players and veterans, they start at the same page and have to work their way up. Um, what else have they talked about? They also talked a little bit about um, creating better squad UI for raiding and World v. World. I don't World v. World, so I'm not really... I don't know much about squad UI anyway, how it is, so I can't really speak to how it's different. Um, they also talked a bit about raids, and um, it's, it's again, it's kind of more of the same information they've talked about. Like, oh, you... Like, you... It's gonna be difficult to do pickup groups. Um, there's no hard gate to prevent you to access the raids, though. Like, but, you know, you're gonna want a organized group. Um, they're gonna try and do good loot for it, etc. And then what else? Oh, they did also today talk about legendary crafting. They went through all the different uh, steps that you're gonna have to go through for crafting legendaries in Heart of Thorns. And it's very different because it's it's all kind of through your achievement panel and you have to do all these like collections and it's it's a lot more, I guess, transparent than it currently is. Like, Right now, to make a legendary, you basically just have to wiki it, because there's nothing in-game that really tells you much about how to get a legendary. Like, I don't know how people figured it out in the first place. But, um, yeah, it's it's weird. But now there's, like... So they, they gave this example of crafting the legendary hammer juggernaut. So the first part is you have to buy these book volumes, and then you have to do a lore collection where you go around to various statues in Tyria, and ponder slash kneel in front of them because reasons and the next bit you have to collect materials and currencies from merchants around Tyria and then after that you have to kill a whole bunch of oozes so that's a thing I don't know what oozes have to do with the juggernaut but that's a thing because each of these is going to be different for the legendary every legendary and then after that you can finally like craft like the precursor and stuff so as you can see this sounds odd yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm really glad that they're actually putting info into the game itself on how to make these things, because like I said before, it's just, I don't know how people even ever figured out how to make legendaries, because it, there's not really any indication in-game of how to do it. It's really weird, but I'm I'm glad for these collections, but the whole thing is kind of weird. But yeah, so that's kind of just a really, really brief overview of all the stuff that they've talked about. Because they've been having, like, streams just all day, the past two days. And so it's really hard to go through all of that in one sitting and figure out what is going on. Especially when a lot of it is they've been rehashing information for people who are just now coming into Guild Wars 2 or just now starting to pay attention to the expansion. Because I guess that's part of the goal of TwitchCon is, you know, like, oh, the game's free to play now, so we want people to get into the game. But yeah, it's a lot of news. So much news. But that's not even the end of all the news. That's just a lot of the TwitchCon stuff. Uh, we are also getting a skill balance patch this coming Tuesday. Um, I know, Thalros, you kind of went through and took a look at all of that stuff, and I kind of didn't because I've been drowning in all this TwitchCon information. Uh, yeah, there's like a few things. Um, some of the prominent stuff. Ellie's OP getting nerfed. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mainly uh, Fire and the Ice Bow were getting pretty significantly... Uh, nerfed. Mm -hmm. Supposedly they're pretty broken right now. Yeah, they're 
quite powerful, um, especially dagger dagger wielding elementalists in PvP are very very powerful. So I'm glad to see that they are kind of toning that back. Mm. Like a few things from you just that like uh, that are relevant to me because I play these classes. Um, some of the guardian stuff, like the Feel My Wrath Elite skill, which gives quickness and fury, is getting a longer cooldown, mm-hmm. which I guess is fair because that ability was really powerful. But at the same time, I'm gonna miss having it. Right. That well, I mean, thirty seconds for an elite skill is pretty low. Um, Mesmer's again a, a couple of quality of life things like um, portals. You know, if you put the first half of it down, you don't know exactly how long you have to put the next one. Mm-hmm. That's kind of a thing, yeah. It's kind of irritating, so they're going to put a buff that will actually tell you how long you have left, which is always nice to have, yeah, especially I'm really for us doing jumping for... puzzles. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. That'll definitely be good. Mm-hmm. And the uh, Mesmer Sword, I think it's, I believe it's the Sword ability speed up. Actually, is it Sword or Focus that does that? I think it's, I think it's the Focus. focus. But we yeah, usually just focus. have the sword in the main hand along with the focus. Yeah. The focus speed up mm-hmm. uh, ability will now actually apply swiftness, uh, refresh it if you already have a swiftness buff on you, which um, is always called like a core of your life buff for me because it's very irritating to have like two seconds left on your speed up. You go through it, but you don't get it because it's not run out yet. Mm. And it's like weird because it's one of like the few that does that. Usually if you get a speed buff from somewhere, it'll refresh or add on to it. Right. This one doesn't either, and it's really odd. Well, luckily they're changing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's like only a couple of other things, I suppose. Axe skills, getting extra radius is something, I guess. Yeah, longer yeah. range is good. Thief pistols getting pretty significant buffs. Um, I don't know exactly how strong that is. You don't, I don't really see thieves, at least in PvP, using pistols. They mainly just, you know, typical daggers. All right. Killing you from out of nowhere. So I guess if more thieves use pistols and are less cowardly about it, then I mean I know I use sword dagger or not sword dagger sword pistol in PvP on my thief, but I'm not a good PvP thief, so I'm probably not a good indication of what. One other thing I guess that was kind of interesting at least to read is that the rousing resilience um, trait for warriors is getting a hundred and thirty percent buff. Wow! So that's probably just a very low value to multiply so it's probably increasing it by like 30 mm. but it's still it just sounds like really an amusingly high number yeah that's pretty crazy but uh, yeah i guess we'll see like what that means yeah i mean it's like what was it the revenants got like 100 percent buffs on some of their skills back oh, way yeah. back when right well that's and cause that in their first a big deal that's because in their first thing they couldn't do anything it was like they were trying to attack you with toothpicks rather than anything yeah so it, it might just end up being like that it's just a high percentage because it's like doubling it from like two to four right <laughs> like one of the thief buffs that got that treatment true but yeah just a few things i don't think it's going to shake things up too much aside from maybe the ellie nerfs which seem to be very very much needed right yeah it'll definitely be good because you see sometimes in pvp you'll come up against a team and it'll have like two or three dagger dagger elementalists and you just can't do anything against that at that point because there's just too much damage you can't it's just uh. Mm -hmm. yeah so another thing that they talked about regarding pvp um it's kind of mostly just they mentioned it in the forums uh somebody was complaining about the pvp population and colin johansson the game director felt the need to come in and kind of uh refute some of these claims. Like somebody said, the current system is making the play- making the player base smaller by the minute for PvP. And Colin Johansson came in and said something pretty interesting, actually. Apparently, right now, um, Guild Wars 2 PvP is the fastest growing part of Guild Wars 2, and it's had more success for ArenaNet and Guild Wars 2 in the last year than it's had by far in the entire history of the Guild Wars franchise. Which I feel like is saying a lot, because the original Guild Wars was pretty famous for its PvP. And so for Guild Wars 2 PvP now to be doing better than that ever was is saying a lot. Um, and yeah, they they said that um, the PvP population has skyrocketed since the game went free, um, and the past two weeks have been literally the best um, population-wise since the game launched. So that's pretty crazy. I mean, I guess it makes sense with free-to-play, there's a lot more people playing. But, yeah, so lots and lots of people are getting into PvP now, which is heartening for me to hear because I love PvP. And, you know, 
I'm always going to advocate for people trying out PvP. Um, they're also going to be doing some tweaks to PvP matchups. Um, the system that they have right now for matching you up with other players to fight with and fight against, they're going to basically be disabling some code that was apparently attempting to account for outliers on teams. So, like... The goal was they were trying to make it so that if you were much less skilled or much more skilled than the rest of your team, like, it wouldn't inaccurately change your rating. But I guess it wasn't working as well as it was, and so they're getting rid of that. Um, they're also fixing some bugs that they had with the way that skilled players were distributed amongst the two teams that get matched up against each other. Um... So hopefully, once that happens, we'll see some more even team matches. I mean, I haven't had too many problems lately, but, uh, yeah, I've mostly just been... I haven't been PvPing as much lately as I usually have, except for this weekend, because Stronghold is on this weekend for TwitchCon, so I've been playing a lot of the Stronghold PvP map, because I love Stronghold, and it's really good. Um, I've been actually playing my Ranger again. And I forgot how good rangers are in Stronghold, because I can just stand on top of things and pew pew pew. Yeah, pretty pretty hard to get, if they can see you coming, at least. Yeah. That's the way it's always been with rangers, from what I've seen. Yep. If they can't see you coming, you're good to go. But if they catch you at close range, nope. nope. Yeah, although I guess we'll see how the druid does. Oh with yeah, Rangers now, cause that could really shake things up. Druid Ranger could be interesting in PvP, or it could be really bad because it's so healing oriented. I'd be afraid that they wouldn't, that they'd always have to be with one other person, and then if they get focused by the other team, which would make sense because they're a healer, uh, they would they could go down very very quickly depending on how fast they could heal themselves. But yeah, I'll be really interested to see them in PvP next weekend. Uh, and I think the last piece of news that has come out is uh, yesterday they announced their partner program, which is kind of this, uh, basically a program to help encourage content creators. So like video makers, streamers, podcasts like us, uh, fan sites, blogs, all that kind of stuff. Just kind of encouraging people to make, you know, fan related Guild Wars 2 content. Uh, by having them join this program, like, you, you apply, and then if they accept you, you, you get some, you know, extra cool stuff to help you make content or whatever. It's not super clear what that entails, but um, it could be good. I guess we'll see. Apparently some video and stream people have already been kind of a part of this partner program, and now they're kind of spreading it out more and, you know, making it a bit more known. So we'll see how that goes. We, we applied, and so we'll see if we get accepted. I think that's finally the end of all the news this week. Although, like I said, they are streaming right now, so I don't know what news they're coming out with right now. But like I said, they are doing personal story stuff right now. <sighs> it's just so much stuff. And I just want I just want Heart of Thorns to be here already. I haven't been playing as much lately because it's like, it's like okay, we, get, we got all this news now. We know what's going to be in this. I just want to play it now. And so I've kind of been just not playing Guild Wars 2 as much because I'm trying to not burn myself out on Guild Wars 2 so I can save up my Guild Wars 2 energy for Heart of Thorns. And I think you guys are kind of in the same boat. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of like just waiting. Mm -hmm. At this point, there isn't a whole lot to do right now, kind of. Yeah, outside of the beta weekends and stuff. Yeah. Yep, been playing a lot of League of Legends. That's Sad about it. times. Yep. What about you, Drek? I did a little bit in the original Guild Wars, actually. I did some more of a vanquishing of some more areas, still trying to fill out my uh, Hall of Heroes so I can get uh, some of the points that I need to get some of the uh, cool little items you can get. Mm -hmm. So still jumping in the original every now and again, but haven't uh, really played Guild Wars 2 at all. I did uh, had to reinstall it because... My computer went wonky, so I reinstalled it and got it all patched up. But I uh, haven't really played, though. Hmm. Just kind of like you guys, just kind of like waiting for Heart of Thorns, basically. Yep. Yeah, it's Ready kind of a, just a wait wait around for the next couple of weeks, kind of. I've got my characters all where I want them, pretty much, for Heart of Thorns. So it's just, yep, like, come on, just, just launch it. Just want to play it now. 
I think I'm probably going to try before the next weekend, before the next beta weekend, I'm going to try to go ahead and pre-order. Oh, yeah. So I can partake in that weekend at least. So hopefully nice. next weekend uh, we all can do some Heart of Thorns stuff. Yeah, and like I said, if I get my Guild Wars 2 and streaming all sorted out, I will, <laughs> yeah. we can stream that. I'll have to mess around with that today and this week. But uh, I think that's kind of it. Any, anything else you guys want to mention about anything? No, just kind of sitting tight, waiting yep. at this point. Yep. Drac, did you want to mention anything about Felicia Day? Yes, I did. I was I was waiting to to for my opening there. Right. I did learn something about Felicia Day this week, believe it or not. Oh, did you? She is an amazing audiobook narrator. Oh, really? Because I listened to the audiobook version of her book, and she's the one that's actually doing the narration, and it is amazing. That's she surprising. is awesome. So yeah. A lot of time you get audiobooks, and the author does not. Read it, yeah, know. that's. I was surprised she was actually reading it. So I guess yeah. she's she's an actor though, so she that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Because I feel like Will Wheaton also reads his own audiobooks. Uh, he did. Yes, I listened to the audio version of his uh, autobiography that he did, and he read that as well too. Mm-hmm. And speaking of Will Wheaton, if if you want to hear an awesome audiobook, get Ready Player One. Okay. He narrates Ready Player One. And he does an amazing job. I mean, that that book is awesome anyway. But it's ten times better if you listen to the audio version with Will Wheaton just because it's Will Wheaton. Right. Will Wheaton is is pretty cool. Indeed, he is. All right. I think that's about it for this week. Done a lot of talking about news. Uh, But, yeah. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Again, sorry for the technical difficulties for the stream. But we'll see you next weekend. If you want more Radio Free Tyria, you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and over at RadioFreeTyria.net, you'll find our RSS feed. Don't miss out on our live streams. Every Saturday at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we record Radio Free Tyria live at twitch.tv slash Radio Free Tyria. We also stream Guild Wars 2 gameplay on and off throughout the week. If you want more news from us, you can find Radio Free Tyria on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and Tumblr. And, of course, for more information about us and our show, you can always check out RadioFreeTeria.net. Mm-hmm.